Today I wanted to show you a recipe that's inspired by one from Danielle Ballou's cookbook, Danielle, My French Cuisine. It's a sea bass en papillote with a leek custard, confit potatoes, and a bordelaise reduction. Oh, it's gonna be a fancy one. Now, before we get started, go ahead and take a stick of butter out of the fridge so it can come to room temperature. I just wanna make your life a little easier later on. So let's get started with the bordelaise reduction, which will take the longest. Get a saucepan going over medium heat, then let's add a 30 gram knob of butter. Once it's melted, throw in a sliced shallot and saute that until it starts picking up some color. Now go ahead and add in a whole 750 milliliter bottle of red wine. I'm using a French table wine. Danielle's recipe calls for a Syrah, but anything you've got on hand should do nicely. Now in a traditional Bordelaise, you'd add beef stock, but for this I'm adding in 250 milliliters of a tawny port. This will serve to reinforce and deepen the flavor of the wine. Crack in some black pepper, throw in two sprigs of thyme, and now we can move that to the back burner to simmer and reduce by half. While that's going, let's work on the potatoes. Chef Ballou's recipe is a modern twist on pomme lyonnaise, that's pan-fried potatoes and onions, which involves running the potato through a vegetable sheeter, rolling it up with caramelized onions and a garlic paste, then confiting it, and then frying it. That's a bit intense, adds a bunch of time to the process, and involves some equipment that I'm pretty sure you don't have. So instead we'll be confiting some cubed potatoes and caramelizing some shallots separately. So go ahead and slice the rounded edges off of a potato to make a sort of elongated cube. Rectangular prism, geometry words. And then let's cut that into two centimeter cubes. Try and keep the sides as parallel as possible so it looks extra fancy. Now we're gonna confit these in clarified butter. If you've got 250 mils of clarified butter on hand, then go ahead and use that. And in hindsight, I probably should have stopped by my local Indian grocery store and picked up some ghee, but I didn't. And if you didn't, then throw 500 grams of butter into a skillet or saucepan. and let that melt. Once it's melted, turn up the heat a little bit and let's skim off the solids that float to the surface. When it's all clear, you've got clarified butter that can be reused just like oil. So throw in the potatoes and let's confit them. That's basically simmering in fat for about an hour. And be sure to rotate them occasionally if one side is sticking out of the butter. Next up, we've got a fun twist on a leek royale. Traditionally, this is like a leek quiche or custard, but this one uses pureed strained leeks and it's cut into fancy cubes. So let's chop up the greens of three leeks. Yes, that's right, we finally have a use for those greens. And we wanna briefly boil them so they soften up. So let's fill a pot with water, bring it to a boil, and throw in our leeks. Boil them for about five minutes until they're soft. Then we can strain those out and throw them into a food processor. Once they're smooth, transfer them into a bowl. And add 250 milliliters of heavy cream. Mix that well so the cream turns green from the leeks. Then go ahead and press those through a fine mesh strainer. We wanna get all the liquid we can out of this to extract as much flavor as possible, so this may take a while. Now let's add in five cracked eggs. I only added in three and it turned out a bit soft, so add five. Beat those in. And then let's add another 250 mils of heavy cream. Now let's go ahead and grease the inside of a baking dish or loaf pan. And cut a piece of parchment to fit inside and grease that as well. I found placing it inside and then flipping it over easily greased both sides. Now pour your leek custard inside, place that pan into another larger pan, and fill that larger pan with water. This is called a bain-marie and it'll act to steam and double boil our custard while it's in the oven. So go ahead and carefully transfer that to a preheated 175 Celsius oven for 40 minutes. Now for the caramelized onions, I'm using shallots. So to a skillet over medium low heat, add a 30 gram knob of butter and let it melt. Once it's melted, go in with five sliced shallots. 
I use the mandolin to get a smoother texture in the final product, but shallots are a bit scary on this thing, so I recommend taking this opportunity to maybe practice your knife skills instead of uh, risking your fingertips. Now we're gonna let those heat up slightly on one side for five minutes without touching them. Then after five minutes, go ahead and stir them so the other side can get some color. And again, wait for five minutes without touching. Now let's season with some salt and the leaves from a sprig of thyme. And continue with the process. Five minutes of browning without touching. All in all, this took me about 45 minutes to get rich, jammy shallots, but your mileage may vary. The key is really just to be patient and take your time. Once they're ready, let's transfer them to a small bowl and chop them up with a stick blender. This could also be done by hand with a knife, but I didn't feel like washing my cutting board yet again. At this point, our bordelais should be reduced by half, so let's go ahead and strain out the shallots and the thyme. Return it to the same pot and reduce it by half again. So we should have gone from one liter of liquid to 500 mils of liquid, and now we're going from 500 mils of liquid to 250 mils of liquid. Okay, back to our potatoes. Let's remove them from the pan and let them cool off while we deal with the whites from our leeks. Go ahead and slice them on the mandolin and dust them with rice flour. Now bring the skillet with the clarified butter up to 175 Celsius and add in the leeks in batches. They really bubble up, so take your time here. Once they look almost golden brown, remove them to a paper towel to drain. They're really thin, so any longer and they'll burn. Trust me, I learned the hard way. Once the leeks are all crisped up, let's carefully pour off most of the clarified butter into a storage container, leaving about a tablespoon in the pan. Now over medium-high heat, let's crisp up the potatoes on all six sides. before removing them to a paper towel to drain. At this point, the leek custard should be ready, so let's remove it from the oven and let it cool off. Finally, we get to the fish. This is an upscale minimalist approach to fish en papillotes, which is basically fish baked in parchment paper. So here I've got a filet of sea bass, and feel free to use a much less expensive fish. This stuff is... Go ahead and cut the filet into a long rectangle, and be sure to hold on to those extra pieces, because, again, expensive. Now slice into the skin lengthwise, being sure to leave a little bit of the meat attached at the bottom. And fold that in half so the skin faces outwards. Go ahead and trim off any uneven surfaces so it's nice and cubic. Now remember that stick of butter that's been sitting unattended for the entirety of this episode? Cut a piece of parchment and grease it up liberally with that butter. Easy to spread, isn't it? Now season the fish with some freshly ground black pepper, as well as a few pinches of salt. Roll it up tightly in that parchment. And let's throw it in the oven, same temp as before, for eight minutes. And while that's going, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I've got new recipes out every Sunday. While that's in the oven, let's turn our attention back to the Bordelaise. It should have reduced by now, so let's bring it to a boil and drop in 120 grams of butter. In case you weren't sure if this is French restaurant cuisine, everything has butter in it. And finally, we can plate everything. Okay, onto your fanciest plate. Let's spoon a fancy line of our fancy sauce, which seems to have split. Next to that, spoon a parallel line of our caramelized shallots. A lot of geometry words here. Now let's flop the leek custard onto a cutting board and cube it up the same size as our potatoes. Again, add those extra eggs or it'll be loose like this. And let's place those cubes down on top of the shallots. Alternating leek potato, leek potato, leek potato, leek potato. And finally, we can unwrap the fish and plate it on top of our Bordelaise. I'm kind of blown away right now. So I definitely over-reduced the Bordelaise. And so I expected that it was going to taste burnt and just unpalatable, which is not the case at all. The amount that those flavors have been like concentrated and reduced turns it into something completely different. That sort of comfort that comes with that first sip of a nice 
rich red wine. The fish is so light that the combination of the two creates this beautiful balance. You only get a little bit of that reduction and that's all you need because it just sort of engulfs your mouth. The leeks didn't set up in the way that I had wanted them to, but regardless, the flavor is just this really light and satisfying leek flavor in a custard, which is really cool and really fun. And the potatoes are like this idyllic version of a home fry. They're soft and creamy on the inside, crispy on the outside, a perfect balance of fried potato flavor and buttery richness. It's kind of ridiculous. This whole dish is kind of ridiculous. And it took me a very long time to make. I don't expect you to make this entire dish all in one go. <laughs> if you do, that's impressive and you are dedicated. What I hope that you can take away from this is some techniques and some ideas that will elevate your cooking to a level that you'll feel proud of and surprised by. It is possible to create just earth shattering food in your home kitchen. <laughs> May take some effort, but you can do it. So I hope you give this a try. And if you do, uh, let me know in the comments which part you tried, which part was your favorite and how it all turned out. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.